Hello and welcome to another lesson on technical analysis here. My name is Chris Capri, I'm the founder of Second Skies. Today we're going to be talking about using the RSI or Relative Strength Index to improve our trading. The RSI was developed by J. Wells Waller in 1978 and it quickly became a popular indicator measuring uh, general overbought or oversold levels for a pair. This is kind of significant for us to know when a pair or stock or commodity is hit an overbought or oversold level because it tells us that if the order flow is heavily skewed to one side eventually those either buyers or sellers are going to have to take profit and exit their positions or there's just going to be no new capital coming into the market to be able to push that pair in one direction thus indicating a potential swing or reversal point. The RSI is pretty simple in its design. It measures the r magnitude of the pairs or price or stocks decline against its gains or its gains against its losses and it converts this into a number that is based between 0 and 100. The most common time period used for the RSI is 14 periods so whether it's an hour chart, daily chart or monthly chart it's either 14 hours, days or months depending on whatever time period you're using and what it does is it displays itself as a single line so it's very simple in design. An overbought level is usually measured by 80 or sometimes 70 reading and above, and an oversold level is often denoted by a 20 or 30 reading or below. Let's take a look at this on a chart. Here we have an example of the euro to US dollar on a daily chart. We can see down here this little yellow line represents the RSI and how it measures the gain in pips or the advances in pips to the number of decline in pips. And this other small lines right over here represent the overbought and the oversold levels, giving us a relative clue as to when the pairs reach this overbought or oversold status. The main or simple strategy or direct strategy for using the RSI is waiting, first of all, for it to hit an overbought or oversold reading. Then once a pair or stock or commodity has hit this overbought or oversold reading, we want the line to cross back over towards the middle. So for example, if a pair has been climbing for quite a long period of time and has hit an overbought level, we don't want to sell short immediately at that point because the pair to get there has to have had a lot of buying pressure or strength to push it to those high levels. We want to wait for the time when it crosses back down uh, into the middle or towards the middle of the chart there. This tells us that the sellers in this case have now taken control they uh, were able to change the reading in the RSI and they were able to change or they are likely to going to change the direction in the chart based on the measurement of the RSI. Here's another example of how this works out. Here's the pound US dollar on a daily chart and we can see the pair has been or advancing for quite a long period of time here reaching to about a 207 uh, figure well, while the pair also hit uh, overbought levels well before that. Notice how the pair continued to climb as the pair hit the overbought region. It was only when the RSI crossed back over the overbought line down towards the middle that the pair really sold off. So this really gave us a clue. If we were long, it could have kept us in the trade a little bit longer, but letting us know to take profit at a certain point soon. Or if we were looking to sell short, we could wait for this to cross over and then sell short, thus getting into a really good position on this short trade. Another important part of using the RSI is looking for divergence. Divergence is when the RSI indicator or line moves in an opposite direction of the price action. So if the pair is falling in the price and the RSI is increasing, then we have divergence. And it's the same for the top side. If the pair is continuing climbing to the upside, but the RSI is declining as well, that should be telling us, again, another clue either to take profit if we're long or to look for a short signal coming soon because a reversal is about to happen. This is absolutely significant. It's kind of like an additional uh, cue to our potential buy or sell signal. Taking a look at a great example of this, the Kiwi Yen on a daily chart in 2007, the summer of 2007, was gaining at a very strong pace with only a little bit of consolidation. But notice how the RSI, after hitting the overbought region, wasn't gaining any new ground. This should have given us a really good clue suggesting that this pair is probably going to reverse sometime soon. And notice when it has uh, an attempt to get above the overbought level but it just isn't able to do it is when the pair stops and then a sharpward uh, fall in the RSI also constitutes a sharpward fall in the pair. So this could have given us a clue again if we were already long to take some profit soon or if we're looking for short wait for a serious dip in the RSI 
and serious divergence before we go short. In conclusion, to sum it all up, the RSI is really beautiful because it's a simple indicator that gives us the overbought and oversold readings. And even though we don't have access to order flow in the currency market, this gives us a relative clue as to whether the buyers and sellers are not only in control but in a very strong favor or not. Because of the overbought or oversold readings, it gives us a clue to a pending potential reversal or swing point for us. And that, using that in combination with the divergence, strengthens the case for a particular reversal or for any reversal we are looking to trade. And so because of this, the RSI has become a very, very powerful and popular indicator also because of its simplicity in giving us swing or reversal points for any particular pair. So that sums it up for our current lesson on RSI. If you have any questions or like further or more advanced instruction, feel free to email us info at 2ndskies.com or visit our website www.2ndskies.com.